Well, how are you today? It's not a beautiful day. <laughs> it's very lightly raining. It wasn't when I started. And uh, it's in the 40s, but it feels chilly. And uh, I'm pretty warm otherwise. So uh, that's my Jeffersonian component of our weather forecast. You've ever been to his home? He has all this paraphernalia Jefferson did for uh, measuring uh, the weather on a daily basis. He was uh, the Renaissance man of that time, when I guess perhaps you could be a Renaissance man. We'd have to ask Benjamin Franklin what he thought about that. Uh, so where are we now? It's very interesting when Congress is concerned about Hunter Biden and his business deals and whether or not Biden knew anything about it. When there's a great Washington Post story today, which goes on at some length above the fold on the right-hand side of the page, and I'm sure it's elsewhere, but I think it's an original by the Post, which inquired after what was it like when Trump's brand, having tried to steal the office that he lost, declined and his business was down. And uh, Kushner, his son-in-law, was uh, in debt for $1.2 billion. And then a couple of months later, no less than Mohammed bin Salman came to their aid with, <laughs> hang on to your hats, $2 billion for a, an equity firm that Kushner set up after leaving the White House. Now, if we're going to do a hearing on uh, Hunter Biden, how about bringing over old Kushner? Uh, what a pair that is, huh? If you, if you want to understand these guys, all you have to do is look at what they do. And the interesting thing is consider how bad they are as business people that only by corruption can they cover their, their bets, if you will, their bad bets in the economy or development or building or you name it. They're terrible business people, but they're great thieves, except for the fact that a really great thief you shouldn't be able to detect. Now, Congress is in love with holding hearings and, uh, you know, they're going to go out and hold all sorts of crazy hearings, I guess, about uh, Hunter and Overlook Kushner. But consider what the price has been for the legislation they're supposed to do. They've had 100 days of Congress, and they've only had 30 days of actually voting on legislation. Could you maintain a job with that kind of productivity? And these guys are telling the nation what businesses should be doing in productivity by their labor force even as uh, our high-tech uh, business sector is taking a punch in the nose. <laughs> the, uh, uh, now, remember the big lie, and I know we, we talk about it a lot, but there's been a development, and uh, they've been nosing around about it the last couple of days. Apparently, Trump's team hired an investigative firm to route out what corruption there may have been in the election. And you know what? They couldn't find any. <laughs> so... Two things. One, it confirms what we already knew. But secondly, it imparts to Trump the knowledge that when he was saying the election was stolen, his own people had investigated and told him in this additional way, no, didn't happen. <laughs> and in the category of tackling one another, and if Trump is tackled by his own expert, what do you think Scott feels these days having been tackled by McConnell? These are quite a group of people. And it's not all. Scott's the, not the only one that had this uh, cockamamie view about how to handle uh, Social Security and, and Medicare. And can you imagine what pain that would close to so many people in this country? And, uh, but they don't give a damn. Let them eat cake. Uh, some might think the guillotine was a good idea. I do not. I'm against capital punishment. But if you could just scare them enough into... Uh, conducting themselves like lawful people, our entire society would be better, but we can't expect that. So Scott, in truth, has been overheard and on tape saying that he wanted to do exactly what uh, Biden said at the State of the Union uh, presentation this past week. And uh, then when he was tackled by McConnell, said, it was a bad idea. It's his idea. It's not the party's idea. And so now Scott has introduced a plan in which he would give more money to uh, Social Security and Medicare. Here's a guy who couldn't find his, hand, his hindquarters with both hands if you gave him a chance. So uh, what are we 
uh, doing, by the way, on the Talking Heads Day, still talking about the State of the Union message. Does that mean we don't have real news to talk about? I mean, how many days must we go over <laughs> that event? It's beyond me. There are a couple of things that are interesting, I think. Pence, uh, he, it looks like he may fight the grand jury appearance by Blackjack Smith. Uh, I'm not sure what they hope to achieve anyhow. Uh, but, I, you know, they're going to inquire into what he did. What, what, what are they going to do? But uh, so Pence is now going to duel <coughs> with the uh, grand jury subpoena for him. And, uh, well, the town is, well, situation normal. They're not doing anything. We, we campaign. We don't govern. And uh, we're going to have two years when... We have some dangerous situations going on, and it would be really handy if the people we elected to office actually did their jobs instead of kind of out on a playground throwing food at each other, because that's what they're doing. So, uh, it's a chilly day with that kind of light rain that, uh, in my experience, <laughs> in Ireland, I think every day I've ever been there, and it's not been that many days, but... Uh, there's always a shower, except you're surrounded in green, but I am here in my cathedral of tall trees, and I'm waiting for the first buds. It'll happen any day now. Bye-bye.